Hey, hey, Thursday afternoon. Let's get some lineup set. Welcome to your week nine fantasy football Q&A here on uh, YouTube.com slash fantasy football. Today, we don't have Brandon Cooks tonight, but we do have Tara Roberts here, and we have Chris Towers as well. And, and we have all of you hitting like, I'm sure, and firing away with your questions. Well, Chris, what's, uh, what's shaking? Shaking, bro. No, nothing. I never know how to answer what's shaking. <laughs> As a question, I'm, like, I'm to think what's about up? It. How are you? What's going on? How's it hanging even? But like, what's shaking? Nothing. Nothing is shaking. Well, I like to keep things secure. You know? <laughs> That's good. We don't we don't need uh, anything in that bookshelf precariously placed above your head to fall. That would be my bad. My curtains literally just fell off the wall right before, oh. like minutes before. <laughs> well, I that's what's off. shaking. Why didn't you, so, why didn't you yes, say it? The, the floor from that, I guess. All right. Tara, I'm going to ask you a fantasy question because I think Ooh. a lot of people are looking to trade Jonathan Taylor, including myself. What can I realistically get in return for Jonathan Taylor from, K from Caleb? Oh, man, that's tough. Um, God, that's a good question. <sighs> Is anyone nothing, really going? Nothing yeah. that makes it worth your while. Yeah, that's the problem. Is that no one is going to give you a running back that is an upgrade from Jonathan Taylor because they all are well aware of the situation. So, I mean, if you're trying to upgrade from Jonathan Taylor, you might have to go the opposite direction and go try and upgrade at another position and maybe take a chance on a. I don't know. You could take a chance on a lower end running back that maybe has some upside moving forward or a good schedule. But outside of that, I don't guys, I'm tough. about, I'm about to accept a trade offer for Jonathan Taylor. Okay. Ooh, what is it? I am. I mean, I feel like I have to do this. My team is terrible and um, it's Jonathan Taylor's fault mostly. And Keenan Allen's fault. I'm going to give up Jonathan Taylor in a 14 team PPR league for <clears throat> Gus Edwards, Chris Olave and Alan Lazard. We are going to click yes on that. So, like, what else are you – like, what else do you have on that team, I guess, is the question. Uh, like how badly do you a, need – If uh, I had a garbage pail somewhere, I would pick that up to show you <laughs> what else I have on the team. Because, like, Gus Edwards may be a starting running back, but probably not. Like, I, I'm not expecting him to be someone that I feel great about starting every week. You're probably hoping for – 14 carries, 65 yards, and then if he gets into the end zone, you feel good about it, but not great. You know, I think like probably... Chris Olave and Alan Lazard for Jonathan Taylor is is not bad, honestly. I mean, I think it's fine, but I, I don't know if it makes your team all that much better. I mean, this team is a lost cause anyway, but just in general, I would take a must start wide receiver. You know, well, I would take a must start wide receiver yeah. and something. I, what I said I wanted for Jonathan Taylor was two players I would never take out of my lineup. And Olave is definitely one of those. And Lazard in a 14-team league is also one of them. But Yeah, he probably is. Yeah. You know, you could shoot a little bit higher than that uh, in a 12-team league. But, you know, look, at you, this ankle injury is a concern. And if he keeps getting dinged up, I just uh, this, uh, I just see a lot of doom, doomsday scenarios, basically, for, for Jonathan Taylor. So There is something ironic about Jonathan Taylor being the one dealing with Lack, nagging injuries after you know the case for him above Christian mm -hmm. McCaffrey was Jonathan Taylor never gets hurt and this is the whole this is the whole point of course is that there's no such thing as a healthy running back or there's no such thing as a running back you can project indefinitely to be healthy they're all injury prone like that's just the nature of the position and so Jonathan Taylor as far as I know had never missed a football game like in his life I've never I've never yeah. seen any any sign that he missed a peewee game or a high school game with injury. This was about as crystal clear as a an injury track record could get. That still counts. And yet he's hurt. Yeah, but that I mean that's still like he had an edge over McCaffrey in that regard. Yeah, I don't right, right, right. Well, but what I'm saying is like our certainty that like McCaffrey was definitely an injury risk and Taylor yes. wasn't. Like that's my problem is that we talk about injury risk as if it's a binary. And it's not. No, it never no, is. I mean, Christian McCaffrey is an injury risk, but Jonathan yes. Taylor isn't. But like, I think that was fine. No, I think but they're running fine. backs. So they're all like, it's, it's that there's probably a 40% chance in any given three week span that a running back's going to get hurt. 
Look, and maybe for Christian McCaffrey, it's 55%. And maybe for Jonathan Taylor, it's 35%. But like, I'm not faulting anybody for going into this year thinking Christian McCaffrey was more injury prone than Jonathan Taylor. Right, right. That's not what I'm saying. <laughs> it kind of is. Saying that, you're saying that they shouldn't have no, even considered that. I'm saying, I'm saying that we express too much certainty eh, in trying to predict injuries. We should, ex- <laughs> we should expect unexpected things to happen when injuries happen. We're not good at predicting injuries. All right, what do you think, Tara? I'm, the injuries aren't the major problem with Jonathan Taylor. This is more in line with a Dalvin Cook kind of situation where you just accept that there's, you know, certain situations where Dalvin Cook's going to miss a certain amount of games. It's not going to kill you because the production is there when he's actually healthy. But the problem is, is that the production hasn't been there when Jonathan Taylor's been healthy. So these injuries wouldn't be a big deal if he was actually producing when he was on the field and he's not. So it just kind of magnifies the injuries and makes it into more of a thing than it really is. I'm, I'm more concerned about his production than I am about the ankle. All right. Andrea wants to know, is Michael Thomas playing this week? Uh, I've seen no indication that he is. Mm -hmm. They haven't practiced yet, I guess. So Uh, cousin Ernest wants to know what's the deal with Brandon cooks stash trade a wave. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> stash. stash, I guess. Yeah, you know, stash. Yeah, I'm in, I'm in Houston. This is not a this is not a good situation. He's uh he's not a happy man right now, and I don't think you can get anything good for him with the production. So it's more of a stash, unfortunately. Uh, you know, I don't know when Nico Collins is going to be back, but he is only 33 percent rostered, and he was leading the team in receiving, I think, before his injury anyway. So not a bad name to stash. Oh, Chris's friend is here. Oh, Sam, thanks, Sam. So Chris is <laughs> Sam, your your Venmo payments on the way. <laughs> <laughs> Ramondre Stevens Stevenson or Damian Pierce in half PPR this week. I'm going with Stevenson. He's a top six running back for me. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and go with uh, I'm gonna go ahead and go with Pierce, given the fact that they will have to push aggressive volume and uh Philadelphia has been a, <laughs> more vulnerable on the run or against the run in the past. So I'm okay with Pierce. That offense was so, I think they had 161 yards last week. 90 of them came on their last drive. It was oh, wow. awful. That, that it was sad. like, they, I think he got three, three catches, two carries and his touchdown on that final drive. If it wasn't for that, he was on, on pace for a disaster game. And the Colts actually, that's Stevenson's matchup. The Colts are, um, becoming one of the worst teams against pass catching running backs. Now they've been really bad there. Stevenson has 15 catches in his last two games, Khalil Herbert, or would you start Dion Jackson? If Jonathan Taylor's out, I would go with Khalil Herbert. I think I would go with Dion Jackson. It's tough. Cause he did have that one game with the 10 catches when Jonathan Taylor was out, but that's not going to happen with Sam Allinger. That was a product of Matt Ryan. I do think, I don't know, he's probably going to play like 70% of the snaps if Jonathan Taylor's out. So I do, I think I would go with Jackson. I think Herbert and Montgomery are both just like boring RB3s now. Uh, Jackson in the other game that he played uh, where he had a lot of work, the one where Hines got hurt yep. almost immediately, he had th- 13 carries for 62 yards and four catches for 29 yards at Denver. Can't, you know, the four catches. That probably won't even happen, but could get more carries. Yep. Um, would you start AJ Dillon or Damian Harris in full PPR? Hmm. I would go with Dillon. Yeah, it's Detroit. I don't like either, but Dillon. Oh, yeah. Let's hit that like button. Would you trade Dalvin Cook and Alan Lazard for Jonathan Taylor and Tyree Hill? Ooh. Uh, depends if you have a backup running back this week might might dictate it. But I think Tyreek Hill is the best player in the deal. And there's a decent chance Jonathan Taylor is the second best player in the deal. So, yeah, I think I would do that. Yeah, I would do this. Okay. Um, yeah, let's take a minute here to remind everybody to hit that stinking like button. We have 41 likes. Now we have 42 likes. We have uh, 242 people watching. So let's get up to 100 likes, please. I'd really appreciate that. We'll start there. and We'll keep on building. Uh, the YouTube poll today is who is your Batman? Mike, this is going to be a runaway. Michael Keaton, Adam West, Christian Bale, or Robert Pattinson? Keaton, West, Bale, or Pattinson? I mean, like it's so easy. I'm going to guess Christian Bale is going to get at least 55% of the vote. 
61% yeah. Christian Bale. It's a fun question. I, neither of you would vote for one of the other three, would you? No, it's Christian Bale for me. Yeah. I might vote for Keaton. There, there's some there's some nostalgia there, but no, I, I think Christian Bale's the right answer. Oh yeah. And, and and how would you rank the Batman? The bat no, sorry. I asked that in before. <laughs> how would you rank the three Christian Bale Batman movies? Oh, uh Dark Knight, Batman Begins, Dark Knight Rises. I will go with that. Dark Knight's my favorite. It's such a good movie. Like that. It's, it's like it's one of those movies that if you stop and think about the plot for a couple minutes, it kind of unra- falls apart. Oh, I accidentally hit a button. Uh, oh, you, uh, you Tara? That was pretty messed up. I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, I'll just stop talking then. <laughs> no, I I I changed my rankings because I used to say Dark Knight Rises was my favorite, oh, but the more I watch it, it's like pretty hokey. Um, it's, so it's it, it just it yeah it falls apart. Uh, Dark Knight right Dark Knight is just man i used to, i worked in a movie theater that summer that it came out and like Ooh, fun you check the 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 way you works is like you check the theaters 15 minutes after it starts and 15 minutes before it ends to like make sure the door is closed and no teens are, are roughhousing and all that and 15 minutes into that movie is right around when the pencil scene happens <laughs> and so we used to fight about who would get to to check the theater <laughs> in the like nine theaters that dark knight was showing in those those months yeah i got one beef with dark knight I just feel like they crammed Two Face in, and it's so unnecessary. Nice, so good, it extends the movie like an extra forty minutes that just don't need to be there. I don't know. Uh, that's my. Mm-hmm. All right. <laughs> uh, I asked for a Jonathan Taylor update. I get Batman talk. Yeah, welcome to a live stream, baby. <laughs> All right, let's see if we got some questions here. We need three in full PPR: Olave, Kirk, Lazard, Palmer, and Myers. I don't think the Packers have practiced today, but Lazard was limited yesterday, so that's good. Um, but who are our three going to be? And then Montgomery Foreman, too. I think it's Olave, Palmer, and... Uh, I would go with Lazard. I think Kirk. Kirk for me, given the matchup. Yeah, but Lazard's matchup is, like, is ridiculous, well, too. Well, true. Just the injury risk. Palmer's yeah. matchup might be the yeah, best in but football. True. That's a lot of good matchups. The Falcons are lot. allowing the most points to quarterbacks and oh, wide receivers great. this season. Mm. Yeah. I'm, I guess I'm cool with that. I just, man, it's Josh Palmer. It's like, I I just feel like it's going to let you down. I don't know. But I, are you guys, oh, by the way, Montgomery or Foreman? Uh, Foreman. Foreman. Yeah. Even if Chuba Hubbard plays? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> Let's see. Somebody drop Michael Thomas in my league. Do I drop Keenan Allen for him? <laughs> Spider-Man meme. Oh, I, would, I would not do that because at least we've actually seen Keenan Allen come back. So, you know, I can hope that it'll happen again. Yeah, I guess. It's it's gross either way, but I, I don't think I would. Yeah. I, yeah. DK or Godwin? I'll go with Godwin. Godwin. Yeah, rest, this is rest of season. DK Metcalf is on the list of players that I don't feel like I could actually sit, but don't really want to start this week. He has played yes. seven games against the Cardinals in his career. He's yeah. never had 60 yards. He has one touchdown. And even post Patrick Peterson, I mean, the last three games he's played against them have been miserable. Uh, so, and I, I'm not convinced he's 100% healthy. He played, what, about 65% of the snaps yeah. last week? Mm. He did score. So I, I, I'd like to be a little lower on uh, Metcalf this week. I don't know. Where do you, Chris, Tara, where do you guys have, Tara, where do you have uh, Metcalf ranked? I'm terrified of both Metcalf and Lockett and Gino, just because we have, we do have the, what was it week six that they played yeah. Arizona? And both of them were absolutely horrendous. So they're wide receiver threes for me at best. I would not like to start them at all. Okay. Uh, Chris, where'd you end up on the Seahawks guys? They're in the mid range wide receiver, wide receiver two, wide receiver two. But there's like a big drop off right around. I would say Devontae Smith at 15. And then there's probably a drop off after that where it's like Tyler Lockett, Gabe Davis, DK Metcalf, Rondale Moore, Michael Pittman, all guys who you're probably starting this week, but I don't necessarily love any of them. Okay. I need an RB2, DeAndre Swift, who was back at practice today. Devin Singletary, Eno Benjamin, or Brian Robinson? 
is already flexing Jamal Williams. I mean, I'm not opposed to going with both of them, Swift yep, and I, Williams. I have my concerns about Swift moving forward, but I, I think he's the easy call here. Oh, well, there's not, it's not an easy call when he's so beat up, but he had five carries last week. And Dan Campbell said, I gave him one too many carries. <laughs> uh, I, I, w- I would have trouble with Eno Benjamin if Connor were out. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. But I'm I think none of the other ones are close enough. Nah, that I agree with. All right. Let's see. Half PPR pick two wide receivers and a flex. All right. Who are our two wide receivers going to be? And who's our flex? Godwin and Boyd. <laughs> Yeah. And then yeah. I think I would go with I go with Swift. Uh, yeah, I think I go Swift over Myers and Pittman. It's close. Yeah. Um by the way, I also want to talk about a few other players who I, I wouldn't love to start this week, but I couldn't sit. Actually, I, I could sit Justin Herbert, assuming there's no Keenan Allen. No Mike Williams, no Keenan Allen. I know he's facing the Falcons. Um I could I could talk myself into sitting Justin Herbert. Tara, how do you feel about that? Not with all the buys. I just when I look at what's on waivers, everybody's yeah. already snatched up Justin Fields. Are you pivoting to Mariota? I mean, it's it's not like, it's ugly. I can start to a tongue of Iloa over him, but then you start looking at like, are you really starting Joe Burrow over him? Coming off that game, Tom Brady with the way he's played, Kirk Cousin, like Cousins, just, I, I would start Cousins. There just aren't a lot of good yeah. options. So the three that I thought were were right behind Herbert and Jamie and Heath's rankings were Kirk Cousins, Justin Fields, and Gino. Gino, Smith. yeah, and Gino I don't love because for the yeah. same you know just just watch our show from three weeks ago I outlined all the things I didn't like about the matchup and it kind of came true, um, but he's playing really well. Uh, yeah, I guess I I guess I would go Cousins. Fields, Herbert, and then Gino, but Fields and Herbert, I might switch. But I would definitely start Cousins. Yeah. You guys, the Fields or Herbert for you guys? Go with Herbert. I would go with Herbert, but I can see the argument with Fields, honestly. Schaefer, let's get a YouTube poll up there. Let's get those four. Let's get those four guys. Let's get Herbert, Cousins, Fields, Gino Smith. Let's see who the people want to start this week. Put their matchups in there if you wouldn't mind as well. Uh, pick two, Everett Ingram. Why? <laughs> Why do you play in a two tight end I'm league? I'm sitting Knox. I am in a two tight end league. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. Really? Uh, mm-hmm. It's not. It's. Uh, it's. Right. <laughs> I mean, well, can we get rid of two catcher leagues, please? And they're as bad as two tight end leagues, which I've never played in. I will say I don't like the like wide receiver slash tight end thing. If oh, you're no. gonna have it. Have a tight end. Oh, Don't yeah. no no half measures. You know. Yeah. <laughs> like fantasy fantasy football is not supposed to be like it's. I don't know, maybe people will get mad at me. It's easier than fantasy baseball, but like it doesn't have to be like hold your hand easy. You should still have to make some tough decisions and like trying to figure out whether you want to take a chance on Mark Andrews in the third in the second round or take you know one of the stud wide receivers. Like that's part of the game. That's that's part of the fun of Again. fantasy football is having to make decisions. Oh, there's so much tight end strategy in the early rounds, you know, and I don't want to lose that. Yeah, there's four tight ends who matter. <laughs> right. If I, <laughs> what, you have, to be honest, I have to, like, when do you draft them? It's a, it's a pretty big question. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do I drop Brandon Cooks for Terrace Marshall? I would not do that right now. If you need a starter this week, maybe, but yeah, I don't, I wouldn't do it. If you have Brandon Cooks and you were planning on starting him tonight, the good news is he was going to be bad anyway. So <laughs> I, I I will say, like, I hope this season, and, and apparently it hasn't, because I don't know if you guys saw the David Carr's ranking of the 2021 qu- rookie quarterback class where he had Davis Mills second as a top 10 pick. Like, I hope this half season so far has, like, put to rest the, like, oh, maybe Davis Mills is the best quarterback in this class because, like, the rest of those guys have not been good. Davis Mills is not good. Like yeah, we don't have to like we don't have to like it. what's that? All right, so there's Trey Fields, Lance, Fields Mac Lance, Jones, Lawrence, Mac Lawrence. Jones, uh Mac Wilson. I think you could put him second. I mean, 
if you put him second, it just means that you don't like any of the other guys. Right. I I, mm. I think that's fine, not liking any of them. But like, I would still rather have Trevor Lawrence than Davis Mills. Like, yeah, give me the guy who has second, right? Justin Fields. I'd ra- much rather have Justin Fields than Davis Davis Mills. Um. Yeah. I, I think I'd so. rather take the chance on Trey Lance. Give me the guy with yeah. you know freakish physical skills over yeah. a guy who's not good and doesn't have the skills. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Okay, I'm in rough shape. Start two running backs in full PPR. Dylan, Benjamin, Caleb Huntley, or Isaiah Pacheco? Oof. Uh, well, I, I think you can wait on Benjamin. He's the only one that I would feel good about starting if James Conner's out. Um, and then I'd go with Dylan. So I would go Benjamin for sure. And I mean, even in this grouping, if Connor's there, I would still probably go Benjamin. But if Cordero Patterson doesn't actually play, mm-hmm. I'm not opposed to going with Huntley over Dylan. That's what I would do. Yeah. Uh, which three 12 half PPR uh, Lazard, Devonte Smith, Juju and Claypool. Oh, you got to sit Claypool. Yeah. Get to yeah. sit Claypool this week. Yeah. We'll see if Lazard plays. That would make Yeah, assuming sense. Lazard plays. <laughs> Would you drop the Cowboys D? Is that for the Eagles D rest of season or, or the Eagles D? Probably carrying both. Uh, I would drop the Cowboys based off schedule. The leagues where I have the Cowboys, I've tried to not drop them. Um, but yeah, the Eagles play this week. So if you have to drop one of them, you drop the one that's not playing. You could try to trade them. I mean, that, I would I would trade for one of those two DSTs, especially the Eagles. They've been that good. I I bid, I put in like a 7 or $8 fab bid in two leagues on the Eagles last week and, and didn't get them in either one. So they're very valuable. They have such a good schedule. And yeah, the, the next time you would sit them week 16 against the Cowboys probably. I mean, yeah. they've got Commanders, Colts, Packers, Titans, Giants, Bears, Cowboys. I don't think you're yeah, sitting them until the Cowboys game. It did lose their best run stuffer by far, their best run stuffer who's mm-hmm. on IR. Um, I don't know if you saw. I've been saying this. Uh, I, texting, I, I couldn't believe it. They, they gave up with Jordan Davis on the field. Did you kick her out again, or was that did she? <laughs> that was not me. <laughs> with Jordan Davis on the field, the Eagles allow like three point seven yards per carry to running backs, and with him off the field, they average they allow six point one. It's crazy. Uh, MVS or Hardman. MB- I go MBS. Yeah. I'll go MBS. Yeah. I talked about this this morning. MBS is um, interesting because uh, the Titans give up the most big plays in the passing game in football. Area. Yeah, I mean they they rank like twenty seventh in points allowed to wide receivers or something this season. They've been like sneaky bad for like three years in a row against wide against the pass. Yep. They're usually good against the run and bad against the pass. No except uh, yeah, it's gonna be a good week for Mahomes. All right. Oh, we got a, a big matchup here in this guy in Reigns League. Palmer or Foreman? PPR. Uh, uh, in PPR, let's see. Foreman is 48. Palmer is 44. So, yeah, I would go with Palmer over Foreman. Palmer. Are you ranking Foreman as if Chuba, Chuba Hubbard's going to play? Yes, that is with Chuba expected. And that was my uh, flex rankings, by the way. Yeah. 48 versus 44. What do you got, Tara? Palmer or Foreman? Palmer for me. Okay. Yeah, Foreman is RB18 still, even with Hubbard active. So I'm assuming there's going to be a change in how they use them. But it is worth noting, Foreman, I think, had fewer carries than Hubbard until Hubbard left the game in week seven. Yeah, I know. But then Mm -hmm. he just had such a great game. Yeah, right. I'm assuming his role is going to change after last week. I was on Team Chubbard for sure. (laughs) <laughs> uh, and I, yeah. you know now I can't really. I do think he should pick him up. He's like sixty eight percent rostered, but I can't really be on Team Chubber right now. It was too good of a performance by Foreman. A uh, good question here from Jalen and great icon, great logo there. Would you trade for injured players that can help in a playoff run, like Hollywood and Mike Williams? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. If you're if you're six and two, seven and one, that's that's absolutely the kind of trade you should be making. You should be looking to get as many impact players as you can on your roster. And both Hollywood Brown and Mike Williams could be impact players. I'm not necessarily saying they will be, but they have that kind of potential for sure. Yeah. And I would say probably lean towards the ones with more known timelines. Hollywood's was a little vague. Mike Williams is pretty clear. We have a clear cut injury thing, but 
but yeah, for sure. Um, do you think that Hollywood Brown is going to be a guy that, you know, really helps you or is everyone just playing second fiddle to Deandre Hopkins? I think he can be a better version of what Christian Kirk was in that offense last year. Yeah. Okay. Should I start Damian Pierce tonight? Probably. Mm -hmm. Unless you have two of like the only questionable guy I have ahead of him is like Raheem Mostert. I, I could see that one. I just, the Texans offense is really, really bad. I know we pay a lot of attention to like other really bad offenses, but the Texans, what a disaster that offense is. No, they're missing their two top wide receivers. Pierce is going to get a lot of work, but to what end? You know, it, it could be 70 yards and just pray for a touchdown. So he's wide receiver 16 for me. Would definitely start Miles Sanders over him. Would start DeAndre Swift. If you have to make the decision on Jonathan Taylor right now, I think you probably just start Damian Pierce. Yep. But – if Taylor's healthy, I'll start him over Pierce. Yeah. There have been two games that they've lost by double digits. And you could say, oh, well, what has he done in those games? They lost by 10 points to the Chargers, and he had 14 carries, 131 yards, and a touchdown, <laughs> and six catches for eight yards. Mm -hmm. They lost by 18 points to the Raiders, and he had 24 touches in that game. He had a big game. But the thing is, they actually led that game going into the fourth quarter. And then they got outscored 21 0 in the fourth quarter. I mean, there is a chance they are getting the doors blown off by by halftime. I mean, this is such a lopsided matchup right now. And that Raiders game, they did take him out of the game late. That was the one game where Dario Gumbawale played uh, like 18% of their snaps or something because they had a bunch of snaps in the fourth quarter. Last week, they kept him in the entire game, even though they were down by two scores late, and he got that garbage time touchdown. So, I mean, I think you feel good about the role. It's just. Does he what what are his chances of scoring a touchdown in a game like this? They seem pretty low. Like he's gonna have to break like a 25 yarder at least, I think, to get in the end zone. Which is possible. Yeah. It is. And and like I said, I mean, and like Tara said, and then I, I you know, this is not a great run defense in the Eagles, which is, you know, surprising because they've been a great run defense for a while, but they're not. And they're much worse without Jordan Davis. Although, you know. Going against a Texas team, Texans team without Brandon Cooks and Nico Collins might make them a great run defense. Maybe. <laughs> what do you think um, is more likely? I, I was honestly thinking about this: the the Eagles win by thirty or more, or the Texans just win. Eagles uh, win by Eagles win by thirty. <laughs> All right, that's right. I have zero they're, they're fourteen <laughs> point favorites on the road. Now that is that is wild. I, I think, think that's I the best year so, <laughs> so far. Biggest road spread of the year, is that what you said? I think it's the biggest spread, period. I don't think there's been a team favored by more than 13 and a half all season. I think, well, I don't know what it ended up as, but I think the Steelers-Bills opened up as a 14-point game. Uh, yeah. What week was that? Week mm. four? I don't know. All right. it, you can look this up. I have this, yeah. All right, yeah. Because I remember the Steelers have never in their franchise history been 14-point underdogs, and I believe they were that week. All right, let's. Sorry about that, everybody. Sorry for the detour. Let's go rapid fire here. We'll answer a lot of questions here. Um, okay, Khalil Herbert, Darnell Mooney, or Terrace Marshall, PPR flex. Herbert. Um. Yeah, that's fine. Kenyon Drake or Deion Jackson, if you know if those guys are both starters. I would go with Deion Jackson. Yeah, Baltimore's Monday night. I had I'd hate to wait and guess. Uh, Thomas Godwin or Kirk PPR. Who's Thomas? Michael Thomas, but uh, Godwin, either, right? Godwin either way. Yeah. yeah. Um. All right. Should I trade my Jonathan Taylor and Damian Harris for Devonte Adams and Christian? Kirk? Oh hell yeah! Yeah. Yeah, you should do that. Yes. Steelers were 14-point dogs, but that was at Buffalo. Okay. Uh, pick two and half PPR, Godwin, DJ Moore, Pittman, and Palmer. I would go Godwin and Palmer. Yeah. Ooh, over DJ Moore? Yep. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm gonna, I, I think I'll go more over Palmer. Okay, let's see. I'm scared to start start three teams or three from one team. 
Justin Herbert, Gerald Everett, and Josh Palmer. Should I start Pittman over Palmer? I have Pittman ranked over Palmer. I, I, I guess there is some like correlative factor that if Herbert has a bad game, it's probably going to sink Everett and Palmer as well. But I just, I don't think they're going to have bad games against the Falcons. So I, I like it. Yes, it's possible that they have bad games. It's also possible that they have huge games and Justin Herbert throws for 300 yards and three touchdowns and Palmer and Everett are massive. So I would, I would stick with the stack. Yeah, I'm sticking with them. I, I'm not given the matchup. I'm not that concerned. Yeah, By the way, I, I lied for, earlier. I would start DJ Moore over Josh Palmer. Okay. I, you'd hate mm-hmm. for uh, like, you'd hate for Herbert and Palmer to have good games and Everett to have a bad game. And you benched Palmer for Pittman, you know, you didn't get, yeah. Yep. Uh, so standard scoring, a wide receiver and a flex. Rondale, Everett, Garrett Wilson, Brian Robinson. Hmm. Oh. Rondale's less valuable in non PPR, but I still think I would go with him. And then I think I would go with Brian Robinson, which you're not going to get me to answer Brian Robinson wow. very often, but I would go with him. <laughs> Uh, I think I'm going Robinson go. too. You I think it just comes down to he probably has the best chance for a touchdown of that group. Yeah, but I think I might go with Garrett. Now I know it's awful matchup, but I think I might go with Garrett Wilson. I like I, I like the volume that I act. Not that I liked how Zach Wilson looked, but the volume was good. So that was good for Garrett Wilson. So I would go Garrett Wilson and uh, Brian Robinson. Okay. Uh, let's see, Pacheco or Deion Jackson. Deion Jackson. I think I'd go with Jackson either way. There was there was a quote uh, from the offensive coordinator that was something like, "It doesn't matter who's going to start; they're all going to play." And like it's just it's a three way backfield on a team that doesn't really use their running backs all that m- enough to to justify using them in a three way share. I guess is the way to put it. Okay. Uh, would you trade Jonathan Taylor, Tom Brady, and Chris Godwin? Whew. For Joe Burrow, Mike Evans, and one of those running backs. Wow. No, I wouldn't. I think Brady and Burrow is pretty much a wash. I think Evans and Godwin, I'd rather have Godwin rest of season, and I'd rather have Taylor than any of those running backs. So, no, I wouldn't do that. Yeah. I think you need a much clearer upgrade at wide receiver or quarterback, I guess. The only way that works out is if someone goes down between Montgomery and Herbert. Okay, I would rather have Evans than Godwin rest of season, but I still wouldn't do the trade. It's pretty close, you know. It wouldn't surprise me one way or the other. You're right, though. You got to have a big upgrade at, at running back, and you're you're not getting that. Okay, Kenyon Drake. Oh, we we asked. Uh, we said Deion Jackson, right? Yeah. Chris yeah. Godwin or Devontae Smith tonight? I'm going with Godwin. Godwin. Don't forget, Devontae Smith is the captain of the all frustration team. So when you see him, <laughs> he will have a great game, but you know, go with Godwin anyway. Pick two from this group Rondale, Foreman, Michael Carter, and Jamal Williams. Did you do go with Godwin on purpose or? No, I didn't. <laughs> but you didn't really believe in Godwin this week. <laughs> um, I'm going with Moore and. Michael Carter was someone who ended up way too high when I did my initial projections mm-hmm. and I had to move him way down. Uh, Foreman. I am on Foreman and Williams. Okay. How about... Ooh. You know, w- one guy that we haven't gotten asked about yet who I'm actually pretty excited about this week, Antonio Gibson. He didn't catch a good practice yesterday with a neck injury. That's one to watch because if yeah. Antonio Gibson gets the J.D. McKissick role in addition to the kind of hybrid he's had recently, he could be really, really good. I love the way they're using him right now. 100% agree because it's a bad running back matchup for Brian Robinson, not for Antonio Gibson, especially yeah, if the game I, gets out I of hand. Vikings have had this sneaky good run defense this year. Mm-hmm. 3.83 yards per carry to run running backs and – um in their last three games, uh, the Bears running backs have averaged 1.9 yards per carry. The Dolphins, 3.2. The Cardinals, 2.1. So they've been great. I don't know what, what that's all about, but they've been crushing it. Um, yeah. So uh, how about this question here? Devontae Smith or Deontay Foreman? I'm going with Devontae. <sighs> Devontae. Mm. <laughs> yeah, go Devontae. 
All right, let's check in on our YouTube poll. Who would you rather have this week? Justin Herbert at Atlanta, Kirk Cousins at Washington, Justin Fields against the Dolphins, and Geno Smith at Arizona. And I am getting crushed in this one. I said Cousins. He's in third place. Herbert is number one. Fields yeah. number two. 41% for Herbert, 33% for Fields. Uh, how much for Cousins here? Eight, I think eight, it's too much for Fields, I will say. I think, I think I'd think i rather have Cousins than Fields. I do like the way, but like the thing with Fields is it feels like a big chunk of his passing game the past four, four weeks when he's been playing better has been like one big play every week. And it's good that he's hitting that. I think he's looked better as a passer, but like those are 50-50 balls by nature. You know, like he had one Darnell Mooney that was, you know, one of the best catches of the season. If he doesn't make that, all of a sudden it's, you know, 50 fewer yards. So I am a little bit concerned that there's just, there's still a pretty low floor for Justin Fields, the way they use him. Okay. Um, all right. So Herbert, people still believing in Herbert, you know, I understand. I wonder if, if they weren't the Falcons, how people would feel about that, but it is arguably the best matchup that you can get. Uh, would you drop Damian Harris for AJ Dillon? I, I think Dylan has more upside in the event of an injury to the other guy. Harris probably has a similar but higher floor on a weekly basis. But if both Ramondre Stevenson and Aaron Jones got hurt, I would rather have AJ Dylan. So I think I would go with Dylan. That's, that's good justification. Although the, I don't know, the touchdown upside, I feel like it'd be stronger with Harris. Yeah. I think Harris is more of a flex though now than Dylan is. Yeah, that's that's what I mean. Right now he's more useful if yeah. you need someone right now. But if it's like your, you know, second running back on your bench or something, then I'd rather have Dylan. All right, grade the trade. I traded Mostert for DJ Moore. I think that's a C. I think that's perfectly fine. I might even prefer the Mostert side. Uh, I'm concerned about Mostert given Jeff Wilson. So I actually don't mind that trade. What kind of mustard do you guys like? If you had mustard, you know, gray Poupon. Uh, yellow. Yellow, yellow <laughs> mustard. I'm, yeah. I'm just a plain French's yellow mustard. But have you ever, Adam, have you ever been to Oshaval? No. In the city? Oh, man. Their but burger. I don't like mustard, so if it's like a mustard place, I'm not going to like it. No, <laughs> it's not a mustard restaurant. It's just their burger. The sauce that they use is like a Dijonais with the burger. It's one of the best burgers I've ever had. So good. Mm -hmm. Would I be cheating if I said honey mustard was my favorite mustard? No, that's fine. Uh, I think I'm it's not cheating. <laughs> it's not, like honey mustard is not mustard. Well, mustard. The problem is honey mustard has so many different, you know, yeah. varieties. You have some that are like much more honey, which I don't love. No, but like when you get a good balance, you know, that's, that's good. I mean, yeah. if you go to McDonald's, you get a honey mustard. It's great. Yeah, they have mm -hmm. a good honey mustard. You know, yeah. I, this is this is something I spent a lot. Of, I'm, I'm a chicken finger connoisseur. I spent a lot of time thinking about this. You want to know who has the best honey mustard in the game? Who? I can, I, I can hear my wife rolling her eyes listening. I'm sure. Uh, Longhorn Steakhouse, oh. the best honey yeah. mustard in the game. Bar I'm, none. I'm They're not paying me to say friend. that, but they should. <laughs> I'm a honey must. I'm a mustard honey mustard fan and whatnot. But I think like. Fuddruckers actually has oh, them. Yeah. yeah. Love Fuddruckers. <laughs> Boy, those this still is a weird conversation, but yeah. <laughs> those still exist, Fuddruckers? Yeah. I think yeah. so. This would be a great birthday party place. Like a lot of my, great. when I didn't never had one there, but a lot of kids when I was growing up, birthday party at Fuddruckers. Uh, how do you feel, TJ Hawkinson, this week? I don't feel good about TJ Hawkinson. Low end starting tight end. Um, comfortable. He's tight end nine for me, so he's ahead of. Evan Ingram and Darren Waller, if Darren Waller plays, but it's, you know, in that gross range. You starting him over Pitts? No. Or is Pitts like tight end one for you? Pitts is tight end four for me. <laughs> okay. Oh. Hawkinson is the only tight end this year that caught a touchdown against the team he currently plays on. Pretty sure. <laughs> Thoughts on Joe you mean, Has Mixon? any other tight ends changed teams? Oh, I doubt it. Thoughts on Joe Mixon rest of season? Um, he's an RB one. You just, yeah. you, you set it and forget it. And you just, I don't know. I, I think like their offensive struggles this year have actually made him slightly better for fantasy just because of all the catches, at least in PPR. Yeah, but, but what does he have two touchdowns this year? 
Yeah, and that, that's, you know, I, I think their offense might not be great right now. So it's it's possible that the touchdowns continue to be an issue, but they're, they have to dump off to him so much that um, yeah. I, I, I think he's a tight end or an RB1. Definitely a tight end one think so? if he was eligible yeah. there. I agree. I mean, the the only the only problem is is that if you can trade out, yeah, because the playoff schedule not super good. So he's he's fine right now, but long term, I might abandon ship if I can. He, he, yeah, he really angers me. All right, pick two: Matt Collins, Josh Reynolds, Don. Ch- I like this question. I mean, this is ugly stuff here, but this is we this is week nine for you. And I think you actually, I think you got three options that I like here. But what do you guys think? Hollins, Reynolds, Hilliard, Ingram. So I really like Ingram. Honestly, it feels weird to go with the tight end out of that grouping, but I think he's the safest option for sure in terms of a stable floor and be able to hit double digits. And it's a good matchup too. So I think Ingram, you want to definitely go with that one. And then yep. I think I'm going with Matt Reynolds. Collins. I'm going Reynolds too. It's weird because he's got he's been just beat up all season. Now he's got a back injury that he was limited yesterday with. So I, I don't feel great about it, but I don't feel great about any of these guys. No, but you know, I think you know, probably nobody really considered the impact of of TJ Hawkinson leaving the Lions. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think there's a little a little bit of a bump for Josh Reynolds, yeah. who leads the team in red zone and green zone targets, I believe, and dropped like a bomb in the end zone last week. It was not an easy play, but uh yeah, look, you're gonna have to get lucky here. Uh, I would, I would try to get lucky with Josh Reynolds. Yeah. Uh, would you trade Brian Robinson for George Pickens in PPR? I would do that. Yeah, yeah, I think there's much more upside in, in PPR with Pickens. Although I don't think the Chase Claypool trade changes much for Pickens. You know, like he just needs he, him and Claypool. Claypool was mostly running like underneath routes. Uh, his his average depth of target is much lower than Pickens. I think the Claypool trade probably helps Fryermuth and Johnson more. I think there was a quote from Johnson about playing more in the slot, which I think would help his value. Um, Pickens, he just needs Kenny Pickett to play better. Kenny Pickett's been awful, especially on deep throws. He's been by far the worst deep passer in the NFL. I think on passes 15 yards or more downfield, he's like 26% completion percentage or something. It's by far the lowest in the NFL. He's got zero touchdowns to six picks on those uh, deep passes. So, if Pickett figures things out, I think George Pickens is going to be very good. Or the Steelers might be drafting in the top five and looking for a quarterback next year. Yeah. Uh, Renato Fonta. What the hell is raspberry? <laughs> it sounds good, actually. I, I I feel like those two flavors would be a nice compliment, but I don't really believe that it exists. <laughs> Never I'm, heard of it. I'm sure. I'm 100% certain it exists. No way. There's no such thing. Raspberry mustard. Oh yeah, there you go. Raspberry mustard. <laughs> so it so it uh, all right, I'll try some of that. Um McLaurin for Zeke. Uh, I'd rather have Zeke. Uh hmm, yeah. <laughs> if you need a running back, yeah. Whatever position you need more. Yeah. Start Chuba Hubbard or Rashad White or Rash- Rashad White. Um I would start Chuba if he's healthy. I think I would start Chuba over Rashad White. Yeah, they're actually back to back in my rankings, thirty-seven and thirty-eight. So, don't love them, but I do have Chuba ranked a little higher. Boy, that that picture in the avatar looks really dangerous. Please, <laughs> please get down. With somebody helping you. All right, who are you sitting here? Ken Walker, Dalvin. Oh, really? <laughs> Ken Walker, Dalvin Cook, or Aaron Jones? I think I'm sitting, man, that is 9, 10, 11 for me at running back. I'm sitting Walker. I have Walker ranked lowest of them, but I don't feel great about it. Mm, I would sit Dalvin Cook. Okay. I, uh, yeah, I, I think that's a perfectly reasonable decision. I Walker is just, he's a type of player I, I really struggle with, and I'm trying to embrace the like, stud running back who doesn't catch passes because I tend to be lower on them than I should be every year. And he's really, really good. He's a home run hitter. You know, it's it's one of those things where he might have seven points with three minutes left in the fourth quarter and then end up with, you know, 18 because he just ripped off a 50 yard run. I think the math on that is right. (laughs) Um, So like that's, he's a really impressive player. DeAndre Swift or Miles Sanders. 
Mm. I think you got to go with Sanders, yeah, you know, just because the. Sanders. I mean, Swift looks like he's going to play, but just go with Sanders. Should I trade Ken Walker for Hopkins? Is it fair in half PPR? Oh, half PPR makes it even more difficult. Yeah. Um, I think I would rather have Hopkins. I think it's super even, but I'm assuming you're doing this because you're fine at running back. Ken Walker was a late later pick for you and you're upgrading. So yeah, I would, if you need a wide receiver, I'm fine with that. That's Just great for both of them. It's like turning round eight picks into must start players. Is great. Yeah. I know. Right. What if you drafted both of them? Very realistic. <laughs> mm. Kareem True. Hunt or Naheem Hines rest of season. Kareem Hunt. Yeah. Hunt. Yeah. Uh, who we, who we flex in in PPR, DJ Moore, Terry McLaurin, Gabe Davis, or Alan Lazard. Oh, that is freaking brutal. Yeah. Cause like none of them are, none of these guys are like, yeah, I feel good. He's going to get nine targets and catch six passes this week. They're all like, man, I hope he hits on a big play. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, like, cause I think Lazard has been actually pretty consistent and, you know, getting about eight targets a game, as I recall, I haven't previewed this game yet. Um, you know, at the beginning, yeah, he's been yeah, he's, he's a, little, a little more hit or miss, but he's been very consistent in the red zone. So that's what I trust more out of him. But injury concern. So Liz, I probably Lazard would be my guy if the, if he weren't quite, if he didn't have this shoulder issue. But I won't. I'm just I'm gonna going to go with Gabe Davis. I'm going with Gabe Davis. Yeah. yeah. Hey, all right. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> totally. I do like it is perfect that he he had a bad game last week, but also had a 28 percent target share. Like I love that. I love that for the discourse. I love that for just everything about the way this season has gone for Gabe Davis, given all the controversy around him in the off season, has just been incredible. Because everyone can say that they're right about him. It was. <laughs> it wasn't a good game for Josh Allen. You know. I mean, it was. Yeah. Well, he only threw 25 times. So yeah, when, when Gabe Davis had a 28% target share, it actually meant that he had seven targets, which is right around what he gets every week. This is not a question that we can answer right now because we don't know if Darren Waller is going to play. So Andrews or Waller, I, you know, if, if both if Andrews is active, you're playing. Are, yeah, if both guys are playing hurt, you're going with, with Andrews. Um, I paid $30 for Aaron Rodgers on the waiver wire. Did I pay too much? Probably. Unless it's a $1,000 fab budget. Mm. Or if it's a hundred and you had a hundred left for some reason. No, I mean you probably it's paid probably a little too, too much, much but yeah. it, but you know what? Hey, you had to you had to get somebody. I assume it's a bi week issue, so it's okay. DJ Moore is gonna eat Eli Apple's lunch. And that just reminds me, <laughs> if you're not really excited about your lunch, put some sliced apple on it. Yeah, you know, <laughs> five times better, just instantly. Like on it or like in like a plastic bag with your lunch? No, on the lunch. Okay. Mm. It has to be, you know, like, like a sandwich. Like what if I'm having like, mm. I guess mac and cheese could work. Anything. A sliced apple in anything. It's <laughs> it's almost foolproof. You know? Um, <laughs> uh, just go for calamari? it. Calamari? Mm. Well, honestly, probably, Chris. Like, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that, you know? You know, sweet and salty. I'm trying, what wouldn't that work with? Putting, putting apple pizza. I wouldn't put it on pizza. Although I don't know, put it on a pizza. I would do it on pizza over calamari in return. <laughs> um, Edo Benjamin or Daryl or uh, Deion Jackson if they're both starting. I think I'd go with Deion Jackson. I would go with Eno if they're both starting. Curtis Samuel or Garrett Wilson in full PPR. I have Garrett Wilson one spot higher. Garrett Wilson. Start one in a standard scoring league. Chuba Hubbard or Gus? Eh, well, I don't know that Gus is going to play. Yeah. I, I would start Gus if he were going to play. Um, probably won't. Probably won't now. Actually, I don't think I would. I, I, I think I'd just go with Edwards. Hubbard. Yeah. I have zero faith in them to use Gus Edwards in a re, in a meaningful way. You know, they've just been so conservative, which is fine. But it's just been bad for fantasy. Yeah. Would you trade just? Oh, hell yeah, I would do this. <laughs> Lamb and ETN? Yeah. Uh, yes. yeah, probably. Yeah, good do that. It's funny, Justin Jefferson, he has some touchdown aggression coming. He hasn't scored since week one, and he's been so good. And he has two freaking touchdowns all year. He has the third or the fourth most re uh, green zone targets in the NFL. And it's not like Adam Thielen's having his usual touchdown uh, luck because he's only got two himself. Who's scoring touchdowns on that team? I got, nobody. I got a stat for you. <laughs> Johnny Munt. 
has one. Jalen Rager has one. I'm going to bring in uh, Vikings fan Thomas Schaefer here. Sorry for surprising you. You looked like <laughs> you, looked, uh, you weren't picking. He wasn't up. paying attention. Um, so uh, Kirk Cousins has now a career high seven straight games without three touch without a three touchdown pass game. Yeah, but how many touchdowns did he? How many games in a row has he thrown a touchdown? He's throwing one in every game. Yeah, but he hasn't thrown three yet. No. We get out of here, Schaefer. We run the ball too. Dalvin scores. Madison's kind of cleaning up randomly. I like, want to know your thoughts on my rankings of the NFC teams. I put I put the Vikings fifth. Yeah, you're a hater. <laughs> I love the Vikings. You Skull. guys don't. Nobody believes in Kirk Cousins. Not even <laughs> Viking fans believe in Kirk Cousins. I believe in Kirk Cousins. So all right. So go ahead, rank the it. NFC teams. I, I, I mean, believe in Kirk Cousins as long as nothing has gone wrong. I mean, what do you mean? Like he's but like he has, as the, the minute something goes drives, wrong, I, just, I, don't, I how can't. Many, how many one score games have we won this year because of Kirk Cousins? That's that's fluky. Yeah, it's like the day. How many did they lose last year? Well, what? What? How many did they lose last year? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, the defense was horrible last right, year. So let, let's I mean, let's, rank, great, let's rank the uh, let's rank the, the the five best NFC teams. My ranking was Eagles, Niners, Cowboys, Seahawks. Vikings. Um, well, let me pull. Let me pull up. Pull it up. Okay. Wow, hater. <laughs> Hates the well, Giants. I mean, obviously, I don't think we're better than the Eagles. Like, we would need luck. They lost a like game. a million points to the well, Eagles. Yeah, I know, but I mean, <laughs> you know, that's one game. But I'm saying, like, even oh. <laughs> even across like playing in Minnesota, we have no chance of winning on the road there. We just yeah. Vikings are a horrible road team. Oh, then and they we'll, can't be a top five team then. <laughs> <laughs> who well, it's you, definitely who not the you? Giants. Like, no, it's not the Giants. I, did you I have mean, the Bucks ahead of them? I mean, I think the no, I had the Seahawks. I mean, ah, uh, that's silly. It's a little. I would <laughs> go. I I kind of like how it's stacking up. Honestly, Eagles, Vikings, uh, Seahawks. I would say the Cowboys over the Seahawks and the Giants. No, I think no Vikings no. are. I think Vikings are three or four. Uh, well, all right, so go ahead. Who's your top four? I, just I think it's it Eagles, Cowboys, and then 49ers, Vikings in some order. I, just because McCaffrey's got there for two weeks, everybody's like – Their point differential is identical. I, I think when their defense there gets healthier, they're, you know, they're going to – You believe more back. in Jimmy Garoppolo than Kirk Cousins? <laughs> oh, I think that's I think that's the Spider Man meme. No, he's been to a Super Bowl and uh, an NFC Championship game. Yeah, Technically true. Uh, okay. well, he yeah, was pre- with, he was present defense, that year so, they made so. the Super Bowl, and that is true. He, he attempted about better, fourteen he, more he, passes he, than he I did. Place this guy three three different times. Come on now, <laughs> Sarah. What, what's your ranking? Give me your top five of the NFC. I'm with Thomas that we got to give the defense a break in its previous behavior. I, Eagles, Cowboys. Um, Vikings, and then uh, Niners. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'd go with I just know. I know with an absolute, with absolute certainty that if the 49ers played the Cowboys in the playoffs, the 49ers are definitely winning that game. I don't hater. Like no, no because no because uh, like Jerry Jones is going to call plays and he's going to give it to Zeke 17 times, and he's going to not maximize their talent. So. Uh, all right, we should get back to the questions here for the last five minutes of our program. Would you trade Juju for Damian Pierce? Yes. Yeah, yeah absolutely, yeah. Okay, would you trade away DeAndre Swift for Joe Burrow? He has Lawrence and he has Stevenson, Rashad White, Gus Edwards. Oh. No, nah, you don't no. have the running no. back depth. And I'm not sure Burrow is that much of an upgrade over Tre- Trevor Lawrence right now. Not at the current moment, probably. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Oh man, he—they're not as bad as they were on Monday night. Uh, but they're not that bad. But I don't know. This team's just had enough bad moments this year when they can't throw the ball deep. That I just, yeah, I'm, I'm worried. Hmm. Mike Evans, Chris Olave, Michael Pittman, DJ Moore. Uh, you sit Pittman. Mm, I'm going with the first three. Oh, okay. Yeah. Being offered Cooper Cup for Tom Brady, Chris Godwin, and Leonard Fournette. Wow. Yeah, I would do that. <laughs> you, you're, you're, I think the Buccaneers are on a buy in week fourteen. Is that? Wait, wait, wait. You, what side week do you want? 11. Bucks, or, Bucks or Cup? Bucks. Oh, okay. So you would not do that. No, I would. I think he's giving up the Bucks. Oh, okay. No, no, no. Okay, I would. I would yeah. rather have the three guys. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know Hello. what this is for, but yeah, you're you're right about that, David. Probably me ranking the Seahawks. <laughs> uh, well, the thing about the the Vikings is that every win they've had has been a one score game. They have the fewest. They have one. Some. Let me tell you. Actually, this is good stuff here. Um, they have the third fewest plays of twenty plus yards, fifth fewest run plays of twenty plus yards, second fewest pass plays of twenty plus yards, th- third fewest pass plays of twenty plus air yards. They're a non-explosive offense right now. And that, to me, is a huge deal. I mean, I, that's something I value more than most people do. But I don't think you can win like that. So, they, you know, I don't really buy their defense, but maybe I'm wrong about that. We'll find out. But they just had a very, very easy schedule. And the one time they played a, a truly good team, the Eagles crushed them. So that's why I'm not really a Vikings guy. But anyway, uh, would you start Deion Jackson or Deontay Foreman in PPR? Foreman. Sorry. Yeah. Foreman, uh, yeah. would you trade Jamar Chase and Pittman for Hopkins and Judy? I, I, um, I would. I think I would, yeah. Yeah. Um, would you rank these guys rest of season? A.J. Brown, Amonra St. Brown, Jalen Waddle. <laughs> That's tough. That order. Uh, I would swap Amon Ra and Waddle. Man, A.J. Brown wasn't even in this group before last week and they're a low volume team I'm wondering if this what is do you mean time. he wasn't in this group before he last wasn't week. he was like 15 he was like wide receiver 15 or something per game what was waddle before last week well that's a good question waddle's top five now i don't know what he was before last week he had 106 but, yards eight catches yeah, and but, two touchdowns last but you week. gotta yeah no you're right but uh he's been pretty damn good whenever he's played with tua that's the thing I mean, I'm not going to hold the Skyler Thompson and Teddy Bridgewater games against him. Um, I would re- I would put Brown last in full PPR. Well, but, like, but rest of season, so then we got to take strength of schedule into consideration. So it's not really a big consideration for me with with Brown and why. I just feel like if you look at Brown, he's just had a lot of games with with not that many targets. You know, like he doesn't get that many targets. Um. I would, mm. Who cares? They're all good. He's had at least seven in every game. Three with double digits. I don't... That's probably not that different from Waddle. Waddle's only had two uh, double-digit target games. Yeah, g- again, I'd like to see more with Tua. But, all right, anyway. They're all good. I think they're all yeah, they probably all pretty close to top 12 rest of the season. Would you trade Gabe Davis and James Conner for Chris Olave and Najee Harris? Yes, I would. <laughs> I guess I would definitely. <laughs> um, the what do we got? We got a start sit question here. All right, give me a tight end and a flex. Ooh, okay. Um, I would go with. I think I have Hayden Hurst ranked highest of this group. Uh, no, I have. Yep, I have t- Hayden Hurst ranked highest of this group, and then Ooh. Antonio Gibson. Hurst yeah. for sure. And then I'm a little. Hmm. Yeah, I think you got to go with Gibson. Yeah. Yeah, Gibson's Duvernay, top 20 for me this week. Duvernay's interesting, though. Yeah, and Duvernay is interesting. And there's going to be a lot of people who have Devin Duvernay. I want to just check two different roster percentages. And we're going to wrap up here. Devin Duvernay is rostered in 71% of leagues. Demarcus Robinson is rostered in 2% of leagues. And in the three games that they played without Rashad Bateman, including last week when Bateman played 17% of the snaps and left, uh, ba- Duver- uh, ba- Duvernay has one more target than Demarcus Robinson. So that's just to say, if you are in a pinch and really need a wide receiver, I guarantee you Demarcus Robinson's available in your league. Two more questions here. Would you make this trade? Give up Jonathan Taylor and Lazard for Jalen Waddle. <sighs> no. I wouldn't. I wouldn't, but you need, would not. You need Taylor to be good because I am. De- there's part of me that just thinks Taylor is going to miss some time with the injury and you know be kind of a mess. But uh, I wouldn't yeah. do that. And would you trade Locker, Lockett, Foot Lockert, and Mostert for Lamb? I would. I wouldn't. Oh, I think I think Lock like Lamb is an upgrade over Lockett, but I don't think it's enough to give up a guy who. I do feel very good about as a starting running back right now. Like, yes, Jeff Wilson 
matters. You know, I think the Dolphins went out and got him for a reason, but like anytime Mostert and Wilson have been on the same team and healthy at the same time, it's been Mostert. I think he's a better player. So I think it's more Wilson, you know, he'll get 30% of the snaps and, you know, I think he's more of an injury uh, insurance than, than anything else for Mostert. I don't think he's going to take Mostert's job or anything. Cool. Mm. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I, I'm more concerned about Mostert. And I like the stability of Lamb. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. I, I don't think I'd make that trade because I really like Lockett, like a lot. Um, he's ter- terrific. And Gino is, I'm just I, like I'm Gino. Six years in a row of Tyler Lockett being one of the best values in drafts. Basically. Just like, like clockwork mm-hmm. every year. It's like David Ortiz. So we used to say about uh, Jarvis Landry. The, but... Yeah, except Lockett actually has upside. All right, Charles. You got 15 seconds to ask a question here. Oh, well, you don't even answer your question. Look at you. You got your hammock. You're super comfortable. I'm only answering a Charles question. Charles, you have 10 seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. I don't even see any questions two. there. Yeah, no, sorry. Sorry, Charles. It's possible that I don't see every question in what I'm looking at, but I don't see. I mean, there's literally thousands of questions, guys. Yeah, it's it's a lot. But I, you know. Uh, All right. Later, everybody. Thank you so much. Thanks to Tara and Chris and Thomas Schaefer. Have a great day. Enjoy the game tonight. Eagles by 27. See ya. (laughs) 